In this lesson, we are going to learn about hypothesis testing with normal distribution. You can test hypotheses about the mean of a normally distributed random variable by looking at the mean of a sample taken from the whole population. For a random sample size n taken from the whole population, where x is normally distributed with some mean and some variance, the sample mean which we represent by x bar is also normally distributed with the same mean as the population, but the variance is divided by the sample size. And notice that we assume that this sample mean is taken from the whole population and this forms the basis of the null hypothesis. We are going to use the distribution of the x bar to determine whether a sample mean is statistically significant or not. What we mean by statistically significant is whether this mean is significantly different from the population or that difference is only due to chance. Let's go to an example to understand this. We can first highlight what we are given. A certain company sells fruit juice in cartons. The amount of juice in a carton has a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 3 milliliters. The company claims that the mean amount of juice per carton, mu, is 60 milliliters. A trading inspector received complaints that the company is overstating the mean amount of juice per carton and he wishes to investigate this complaint. This trading inspector takes a random sample of 16 cartons and finds that the mean amount of juice per carton is 59.1 milliliters. Using a 5% level of significance and stating your hypothesis clearly, test whether or not there is evidence to uphold this complaint. Let the random variable x be the amount of juice in a carton and assume the null hypothesis of the population that the random variable x is normally distributed with mean 60 and variance 9. Therefore, the sample mean is also normally distributed with a mean 60, which is the same as the population mean. However, the variance will have to be divided by the total sample size. Our null hypothesis, mean is equal to 60, and the alternate hypothesis is mean is less than 60. Now, the reason we have less than 60 because of the keyword overstating the mean. What we are going to test now is whether this 59.1, the sample mean, is only due to chance or it's really significant and indeed the company is overstating the mean. If this shaded area is 5% or less, then we can consider this significant. This 5% significance level is telling us that if there is 5% or less chance of getting a mean of 59.1 from the whole population with a mean of 60, then this is quite unlikely to happen purely by chance. So let's test this. Now we have to navigate to the normal CD function on our calculator. You can see in the previous video, in 3E, how we navigated to the inverse normal distribution. Now, it's going to be exactly the same route, but instead of the last stage where we are choosing inverse normal distribution, we are instead choosing the option for the normal CD. So that is normal cumulative distribution. I'm going to reiterate the steps for the Casio class with calculator. You need to press menu, then option 7 for distribution, then option 2 for normal CD, normal cumulative distribution. For the lower band, I prefer to write some very negative number, something like minus a thousand, minus a million, minus 100, something like that. 
even though realistically there is not gonna be a mean of minus something in this context. However, just to make sure that the numbers work out right, it's better to just be safe. For the upper bound, we need to take the sample mean. For the standard deviation, we must take the square root of the variance of the sample mean. So it's the sample standard deviation. And the mean is 16. Once we typed all of this in, we will have a probability of 0 0.1151. When we read these numbers off, we tend to give it to four decimal places because uh, normally the statistical tables with the point probabilities are also given to four decimal places. The shaded part on this diagram is 11.51%. 11.51% is larger than 5%. So we must write the inequality down as a conclusion. Once we have got this, we must write a two-step conclusion. First, we are going to state whether we are going to stick with the HO or with the H1. So in this situation, we will stick to HO. A preferred way to formulate this with statistical language is there is not enough evidence to reject HO. So this is step one. And for step two, we need to put this in a context. So let's read the question again. So the complaint was that they are overstating the mean amount of juice per carton. Now we can just repeat the same words, but in front of it we write there is not enough evidence. Therefore, not enough evidence that the company is overstating the mean amount of juice per carton.